In this video, I'm going to show you how to add and subtract rational expressions. And so we're going to start with some simple rational expressions that are like rational expressions, meaning they have common denominators. So I'm going to start by getting an example with numbers and use that example with numbers to kind of show us how we're going to work with polynomials. So let's take a look at this number example. So here I have 1 fifth minus 3 fifths. And you'll notice I already have a common denominator, so I would say these are like rational expressions. Got the right denominator. Now, when we add or subtract, the denominators stay the same. So I know I'm going to get a denominator of 5 here, and then all I have to do is 1 minus 3. Well, if I start with 1, I take 3 away, that's going to give me negative 2. Now I would look to simplify, to see if I could simplify this rational expression. I can't, so that one's done. Now let's use that same idea now to talk about this rational expression over here with polynomials. You'll notice here with polynomials, I already have a common denominator in this case, so that denominator is not going to change. So in my answer over here, I'm going to write that as just x plus 1. And now what I want to do is I want to get an answer in the numerator. I want to do the subtraction. So one thing about the subtraction, I don't want to just subtract this 3x. I need to subtract both the 3x and the negative 2. So you can kind of think of this as distributing this negative to both of those terms, since I have to subtract both of those terms. So let's see, I would start, I would say 6x minus 3x. Well, 6x minus 3x is just going to give us 3x. And now I'm going to say negative 7, a negative 7 minus a negative 2. Well, that scenario where we have minus a negative, remember, we're just going to think of this as plus a positive 2. I'm going to add that minus a negative. So I can think of this as negative 7 plus 2. Well, negative 7 plus 2 is going to give me negative 5. And now I would check to see if I could simplify that rational expression here at the end. The only way we're going to be able to simplify that is first factor it. And if you take a look, 3x minus 5, that's not a difference of squares. We don't have a, a, a common factor there, so I can't factor that. I can't factor x plus 1. So that is its final simplified form. All right, so now let's take a look at rational expressions that don't have common denominators. And we'll first take a look at 1 sixth and 1 ninth. These are, these are problems we worked with before lots of times. And normally to find the LCD, we would just find the first multiple that 6 and 9 had in common. So we think maybe 9 times 1, no, 6 doesn't go into 9. 9 times 2 is 18. Yeah, 6 goes into 18. There's our common denominator. I want to show you a process for finding the common denominator, however. That's going to work over here when we're dealing with the polynomials. Uh, we're not going to be able to look at these two denominators and quickly identify what the LCD is like we can with 6 and 9. So let me show you this process here. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor each of these denominators. So with 6, I would factor 6 into 2 times 3. And with 9, I would factor that into 3 times 3. Now, when I'm finding my LCD, I want to represent each of the factor types that I have here. But if any of them repeat in each of the numbers, I only want to list them once. So notice this 3 is in both the first 6 and the, first, and the second 9. So I would only want to list that once, and I would want to represent every other factor type as it appears. So I want to represent the 2, but since 3 appeared in both of these, they had it in common, I only list it once for this pair of 3's. And then this final 3, since it only was in 9, I'm going to go ahead and list that one again. And you can see that this would still give us that common denominator of 18. 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 3 is 18. So there's another way to find that denominator, and this way will work when I'm dealing with polynomials over here. So I would start the same way. I would factor each of the denominators. So y squared minus 16, that is y plus 4 and y minus 4. And then over here, y plus 4, that's already factored. So I would just bring that factor down. Now the LCD, I want to represent each of these factor types, but if any repeat, I only need to list it once, and you can see that this one does repeat. We have y plus 4, and y plus 4 again. So my LCD is going to be y plus 4, and then times y minus 4. Okay, now that we've found the least common denominators, let's take a look at how we're going to build these fractions into like fractions. With numbers, we would say, okay, we want this 1 6 and this 1 9th to now have a new denominator of 18, my least common denominator. And now we would look for the missing multipliers. We're starting with 6, we want to get to 18, therefore the missing multiplier there is 3. So I would multiply top and bottom by 3. So that would give me 3 18ths. 
Now looking at one ninth, my missing multiplier there is two. So I multiply top and the bottom by two, gives me two eighteenths. Once I have common denominators, now I can add them together. Three of these eighteenths plus two more eighteenths is going to give me five eighteenths. And if I check, they don't share any common factors between five and eighteen, so that's my final simplified answer. Now let's take a look at this with polynomials. We know our LCD is this y plus 4 and this y minus 4. So that's where we're going. We want both of these fractions now to have that as the denominator. So I'll go y plus 4 times y minus 4 for the first one. And the second one, same thing. Okay, just like we did here with the numbers, we started with 6 and we figured out how we're going to get to 18. We're going to start with this denominator and figure out how we're going to get this. Well, y squared minus 16, that's a difference of squares. Remember, that is y plus 4, y minus 4 to begin with. So this fraction right here is good. It already has the correct denominator. If I was to multiply this back, I would get this exact same thing. So I don't have to do anything to this first fraction because it already has the correct denominator. So that's going to stay 8y. The second fraction, however, though, I need to do a little bit of work. I'm starting with y plus 4. I want to have y plus 4 times y minus 4. So the missing multiplier there is just that y minus 4. So I would multiply top and the bottom times y minus 4. Well, now that's going to give me this correct denominator. Let's look at the numerator. I would have to multiply 5 times that y minus 4. So I would distribute that 5. And that would give me 5y minus 20. Okay. Now let's go ahead and subtract these fractions. We have common denominators, so that's going to stay the same. It's going to be y plus 4 times y minus 4. Now let's take a look at the numerators. 8y minus 5y. Well, if I do 8y minus 5y, that's going to give me 3y. And then if I do 8y minus a negative 20, well, minus a negative 20, that's a double negative, so we're actually going to turn that to plus 20. And now I would take a look to see if I could factor and simplify this. 3y plus 20, I cannot factor 3y plus 20. And 3y plus 20 is not a common factor with the denominator, so that's my final simplified answer. So I've shown you some problems here where we're adding and subtracting rational expressions, some that have common denominators and some that don't have common denominators. Now it's time for you to practice. So pause your video player and answer this, this question. And when you get done, hit play and follow along and see if you did it correctly. Okay, so you'll notice here we don't have common denominators, so the first thing I want to do is find the LCD. To do that, I want to factor each of the denominators. So I factor this 5y minus 10. Well, there the greatest common factor is 5. So I'm going to factor that out. So it's 5 times y minus 2. My next denominator, uh, I also want to factor using the greatest common factor. There the greatest common factor is 4. So to get my LCD, I want to represent each of these factor types, but if one appears twice, I only need to represent it one time. So let's take a look. I have the 5 and I have the 4, so I want to represent those. Let's put those in parentheses. And then I also have this y minus 2, but that is appearing twice. It appears here and here, so I only need to list it one time. So that's going to be y minus 2. Okay, so there is my LCD. These three things multiply to get it 5 times 4 times y minus 2. So let's take that now and change each of these denominators. Okay, once I found the LCD, I want to write that LCD, this 5 times 4 times y minus 2, as a denominator for each of these fractions. And now I want to go ahead and multiply by the missing multiplier to get to here. Well, remember when we factored this 5y minus 10, we had this 5 times y minus 2. So we already have most of the denominator here. The only thing we're missing is that 4. So the missing multiplier of this fraction is going to be 4. So I would multiply the top and the bottom by 4. Well, the bottom is already good. It's got the 4 there. So the, multiplying the top, 4 times 4y would give me 16y. Let's take a look at the second fraction now. Uh, remember when I factored this one, it was 4 times y minus 2. So here we are, 4 times y minus 2, and we need to get to here. So you can see the only thing that we're missing there is that 5. So I want to multiply top and the bottom by 5. Times 5, times 5, that's going to give me then in the top 15y. 
So now I'm ready. I have a common denominator. I can go ahead and add these fractions together. So our denominator is going to stay the same. 5 times 4 times y minus 2. And in the numerators, I have 16y plus 15y, so that's going to give me 31y. Um, now I would look to simplify this to see if I could divide out a common factor of 5 or 4, but that doesn't go into 31. So this is my final then simplified form of this problem.